In today's video, I'm going to show you how I combine spray paint and acrylic pouring to melt the moon. I'm going to start with the spray paint first. The acrylic pouring part comes in around uh, minute 10, give or take a couple seconds. Now to make the planet stencil, all I did was take a can of tuna and dent it up a little bit. For the moon, I started with the darker color on the bottom and then the lighter colors progressively up towards the top. Let them dry for a little bit and sprayed over with the black paint. Went back in over it with the grocery bag. Take off some of the black paint. Now I made a mistake there. I started the shading in on the bottom with black and when I in had intended on using white. So I tried to save it and then ended up just kind of starting over a little bit so I could get the shading how I wanted it. And to get the colors exactly how I wanted, I ended up spraying some onto the bag and dabbing the bag back over the planet to get the brightness and the pop from the colors that I was looking for. Let it dry a little bit, use a fan. I, do, I don't use the flame method. Aside from being dangerous, it can also burn off some of the paint and change how the paint looks. <laughs> Sorry about that. That is what a Star Trek Enterprise telephone rings like. A red alert. That's what I have in my office. So I fill back in the, the background. Draw in the mountains where I think I'm going to want them with the purple that I'm going to want under them. Add a little color to the sky. And I layer it back in with some black just to try to get a darker contrast to what the planet's going to end up being. And also to give it a little more depth. And what I was trying to do here was just spray a little bit of white on the edge of the can to give a little bit of a, a white burst underneath the planet. But I messed it up a couple times. So as it was drying, I went back in with a couple other colors to add more flavor to the sky. I'm going to do a quick and kind of close to the canvas spray of white to try to get a little bit of fog smoky effect. I do end up covering most of this up with touching up different things later and I go in and use a, a brush technique towards the end to get it back. with the mountain didn't come out quite like I liked it with the bag. I mean, it left some of the texture when I came off with the bag, but the colors weren't quite how I wanted. So I sprayed some, some of that purple out onto a scrap board and dipped in a little folded up piece of, I think it was junk mail that I tore off. Bob Ross used to do that with like a palette knife or something. So if you're looking on carving mountains out like that, you might want to go back and a lot of his videos are up on YouTube. So I added in another mountain. Try to add a little bit of depth to the painting and texturized it with the bag and then went back in with that little folded piece of paper cardboard thing 
I did dip it also in a little bit lighter color than the darker color I was using. I think I used both the darker color and a little bit lighter color. As it comes more to the foreground, I thought the color ought to, to uh, be a little bit brighter. Now I'm going to go through the same type process with this mountain. I wanted to put some little rocks a little more in the foreground, so I kind of just ripped up a piece of scrap board. I went to go to put it in and I decided I needed to wait for the painting to dry a little bit. Just trying to put in a little bit of water here. End up trying to use a scraper to try to create the water effect. I was pushing down too hard so it actually left scratches in. So I just sprayed back over it and used a light touch with my finger to, to add it in. Didn't like it so I started over. And just putting the rocks back in that I covered up with the water. And maybe one day I'll get everything done the way I like it the first time. But that's not where I'm at right now. So keep practicing. looks like there's going to be a little tree that lives there. I sprayed some black out on a scrap board and just used a regular brush to draw it in. Then I used sort of a dark yellow to go back in, add a little highlights to it. Same with the little tree that lives on the left side. I think I might have watched a little too much Bob Ross. <laughs> I don't know. Is there such thing as too much? To put in the leaves, I had two different shades of green that I sprayed out on that scrap board and I used a little fan brush to just kind of dot them in. And after I put in all the lighter green that I went back with the same brush, the fan brush, and dotted in some black.
So this is right about the end of the work I did outside with the spray paint. And let it dry for quite a while, probably a few hours, and then I brought it inside and started with the fluid pouring. I had mixed up some black and I think brown and yellow okra and, and a few other colors you'll see come in for the house. I'll put a little bit of a video at the end to show how I did it before and messed it up because my paints were too thin and I was trying to do it outside on my spray paint table that is not level and it did not come out the way I was hoping. So for try two, I brought it inside to do this part on a table that I know is, I don't know if it's perfectly level, but it's pretty close. It is helpful for some of these you know, smaller techniques where you're trying to draw in with the fluid paint to have them in bottles. But I only had so many bottles, and for just this tiny amount of paint, I figured might as well just use the coffee stirrer to dip in and, and put in just a little bit of paint. The mix was probably one-to-one -one of paint to the Liquitex pouring medium. It's a little bit thicker a lot thicker than I usually use for a regular pouring. And for some of the colors that were more in the distance, I rubbed them in with my finger. So that was a little bit of brown there. I do it a little the same thing with some green a little bit later when I'm putting in the grass.
when I was doing some of the touch-ups with the spray paint I ended up taking a lot of the kind of foggy effect out so I went back in with some iridescent white and just a touch of titanium white and I started with a dry brush and then added just a little bit of water later about halfway through it So here's the final image after I took a photo in the best flat light I could. Actually, there was a little bit of sunlight coming through, but it was cloudy. It was an overcast morning. I did do some digital touch-ups because I actually looked like someone had sneezed on the painting when I got up this morning. I don't know what, what had happened or maybe some of the clear spray that I'd put over the, the spray paint before I started into the, the acrylic pouring. Maybe it reacted funny with some of the paint. I'm not really sure. But I just kind of did a little bit of spot correction in uh, Photoshop. All right, so tell me what you think down in the comments. Do you have two different styles of painting that you like to combine? 